I wasn't expecting this this year, but we'll see what we have here. Actually, what's up, Lazy Dog fam? Hope all y'all are having a wonderful day. It is Saturday, April 29th, here in South Georgia, and today we need to work on our garlic a little bit. We've got some garlic, I think, that is ready to harvest. We've got some other garlic that is forming scapes right now. Got three different types growing, one that we've never grown before. So we're going to check on all that. And then after we finish with the garlic, I think we need to add some more Florida weave to our determinate tomatoes. So we've got some hardneck garlic in this raised bed, a variety called Spanish Roja that a viewer sent us. And then in one of our in-ground plots, we've got some softneck garlic, a variety called Island Star that we planted from cloves we saved when we grew it last year. And then we've got some elephant garlic here. I think we're working on year three or four with this seed stock of elephant garlic. So we've grown elephant garlic for many years. Last year we tried soft neck garlic for the first time, grew four different varieties. We put the cloves in the fridge for a couple months before planting, and we did pretty good with it. We got stratification, we got individual cloves on the bulbs, and then this year we grew hard neck garlic for the first time, which is supposed to be the hardest type to grow down here where it doesn't get real cold. Now every clove of elephant garlic that we planted didn't make a plant. You can see we've got a few skips along there, but I think our elephant garlic is gonna end up doing pretty well. The soft neck garlic here, the Island Star variety we saved from last year is another story. We didn't get much emergence with this right here. We planted a bunch of cloves and shoot, we probably got 20, 25 plants at the most along there. So I don't really have any idea why our soft neck garlic didn't perform as well as it did last year. We did the exact same process that we did last year. I know we had plenty of nutrients in the soil here because those onions over there look so good. The only thing I did do different from last year is when I planted those soft neck garlic cloves, I didn't orient them with the stem end pointing up. I just kind of put them down in the soil there. I don't think that would make that big of a difference, but it may have here. We could also probably blame a little bit of it on the Arctic blast as well. Garlic's pretty cold hardy. Those plants were just kind of coming up when we got that really, really hard freeze before Christmas. So it's gonna be a pretty pitiful showing on the soft neck garlic this year, but that'll be okay because our elephant garlic looks pretty good. That hard neck garlic I showed you earlier looks pretty good. So we'll have plenty of garlic, just not a whole lot of soft neck garlic. Now, as far as when you should harvest this stuff, elephant garlic and hard neck garlic are a lot easier to know when to harvest because they form these little seed heads here we call scapes. We'll talk more about those in a minute. Soft neck garlic doesn't form the scapes and what you're looking for with these is the plant to kind of start dying back like those have there. Now last year I didn't have any of the plants just fall over like some of these are right now. What happened last year is we noticed some of these bottom leaves kind of yellowing and dying back and we started harvesting the soft neck garlic. Some of the varieties we harvested too late. They looked a little rough when we pulled them out of the ground. So we kind of learned a few things about the timing of harvesting the soft neck garlic. I wasn't expecting this this year, but we'll see what we have here. Actually, a pretty decent size clove there that plant looks mighty pitiful but that there looks pretty good see what we got right here <clears throat> that one's a good bit smaller than that one but we still got individual cloves i can feel them there so we did get stratification again so i went ahead and pulled all that island star soft neck garlic we've got a few really nice heads there we've got some puny heads in there as well i don't remember this stuff being this red last year so that's a little something different for me in addition to the lackluster performance we've also got a few what we call pearls in there these feel like they didn't stratify at all just feels like one big garlic clove there so got a few pearls in there we can use those pearls we'll still eat those but ideally what we want to see is these bigger heads right here with stratification and some nice big cloves on them so we'll take that soft neck garlic and put it on our hardware cloth rack. 
way back there underneath the barn it will store really well underneath there we can eat the garlic as we need it or use it as we need it it will also store long enough to use again for seed stock this fall if we want to do that i don't know that i'm going to replant that seed stock there that wasn't very promising for me i may start with a fresh new seed stock from a reputable garlic supplier this next year so now that the soft neck garlic is harvested, let's deal with this elephant garlic here. Now we're not gonna pull any of this today, but there is something we need to do. Now you can see not all of these plants have formed a scape or a seed head yet, but a good many of them have. Now I've never done a side-by-side -side test on this, and I think it would be kind of difficult to do because even though all this garlic was planted at the same time, grown in the same conditions, not all those plants look the same. But according to the people who have been growing garlic a lot longer than I have, what you want to do is cut off those scapes. That's going to make the garlic plant devote more energy into the garlic bulb as opposed to the seed head. Now to me that sounds a little bit counterintuitive when I think about onions because when onions form a seed head they're done growing and they usually don't store very well. But supposedly with garlic if you cut off the seed head it will continue to grow a little bit more. It's something we've been doing over the last three or four years. Definitely doesn't seem to hurt anything so we're going to keep doing it. So for the garlic plants that have formed scapes we're just going to clip those off. And in addition to making a bigger bulb, hopefully, you can also eat these things right here. They're pretty dang tasty. I'm not going to eat that flower head part. I'm going to clip that off there, put those in my bucket. So we'll go through here and get all the scapes we can see. So we've got a nice little handful of scapes here. These smell absolutely amazing. They should be quite tasty tonight. Now, we're just going to have to keep an eye on these few rows. Over the next week or so, some of the plants haven't formed scapes yet, so we just have to come out here every couple days and clip off the scapes. And then, after all the scapes have been removed from all the plants, then we're looking for the plants to start dying back a little bit. When we start seeing some significant yellowing on the plants, that's when they're ready to pull. So we know the drill pretty well on the elephant garlic just because we've been doing it for so long. But like I told you earlier, this is our rookie year with the hard neck garlic. But from what I understand, the process is very similar to elephant garlic. Now up until just about a week or two ago, these Spanish Roja hard neck garlic plants look very similar to our elephant garlic plants. And then all of a sudden they started forming all these little shoots out of the base of the plant here. And now they look kind of wicked. Now, having never seen that before, I just had to pull one of the smaller plants out of there and see what was going on, and it looks like everything's just fine. Looks like we've got some nice stratification on that garlic head right there. Not a huge garlic head, but that's what we're wanting to see with the individual cloves there. So I have since been informed that all this crazy looking new growth is called a witch's broom. And I guess it's pretty normal with hard neck garlic, but since I'd never grown it before, didn't really know what to expect, didn't really know what I was looking at here. Now another interesting thing, whereas the elephant garlic only puts up one scape per plant, there are multiple scapes per plant with this hard neck garlic here. So we're gonna go ahead and clip those off too, but we'll end up getting a lot more because there's more than one scape per plant. All right, so I think I got them all. I maybe missed a couple there. We got us a nice little harvest of hard neck garlic scapes. Now the guy that sent me this hard neck garlic to plant did tell me that these scapes are a lot better when you cut them kind of young. They're a lot more tender, a lot more flavorful. So that's what we were trying to do here. Cut them before those flower heads kind of open up. Now I won't know this until we cook some and try them. But I would guess that these are probably going to be a lot more flavorful than the elephant garlic scapes, considering the fact that hard neck garlic has more bite, usually has a little more flavor than elephant garlic does. Now over here in our tomato plot, we've got some fast growing determinate tomatoes that have quickly outgrown that first line of string on our Florida weave trellis. And we had several viewers mention that they wanted to see every step of the process, see us add every line of string. So that's what I'm going to try to do. Now we do have a few plants in both of these rows that are smaller than the others. A few plants that we had to replace like that one there that's why it's not as big as some of these others now before we started getting all this rain the last few days i was coming out here every afternoon with a little hand nozzle and giving my tater plants back there a little splash because it was kind of dry 
after I watered the taters for those smaller tomato plants I was watering the heels on those really well hoping that that would help them catch up to those other plants that's one kind of kicker with the Florida weave trellis you need all the plants to be relatively the same size I think it worked a little up until we started getting all this rain those other plants kind of exploded as well so these taller plants could have used the second line of string several days ago, but we were waiting on those couple smaller plants to catch up. Now that they've caught up a little bit, we can do the entire row. Works a lot easier like that. And with the Florida weave, there's really no such thing as having too much string, but there is such thing as not having enough, and you can run into some problems if you don't have enough string. So err on the side of adding too much. Add as many lines as you think you'll need. So we're going to start weaving around these plants then we'll come back all right all right all right so that's what it looks like after two lines of string have been ran and we could end up running six or seven lines of string by the time it's all over already starting to get some blooms on some of these babies here especially with this roadster variety and I'm not going to do it today because it's about to start raining again. But pretty soon I need to drop some string from this conduit and start supporting these indeterminate tomatoes here. I lost one or two of them a couple nights ago when we had a pretty rough storm come through here. Sometimes when they break but don't break completely, you can prop them back up, put some soil around them, and they will heal over. That one there looks like it may make a comeback. But then... You've got some that end up looking like this one right here. I don't know that that one's going to make it. But we do have some backups in the greenhouse. We'll replace that plant if we need to. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. Be sure to check out our affiliate links in the description below. And go check out our website, LazyDogFarm.com. And if you want to see a much better soft neck garlic harvest than what we just had, check out this video right here. It shows our harvest from last year where we did pretty good and talks about all the tricks we use to get soft neck garlic to form individual cloves or stratify down here where it doesn't get real cold. So check that out and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm.